Sometimes I find that it's the little things that you add to your edit, the things that you don't necessarily have to do, are what set it apart and make it more visually satisfying to your viewer. Now, what I'm always telling editors is to learn some basic VFX inside of After Effects because it can help take your edits to that next level. So that's what we're doing in today's video. Let's open up After Effects and jump on in. And by the way, if you wanna open up our After Effects files to see exactly all the different effects we use, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash premiergal and you'll be able to download the project files there. For the first effect, we're going to recreate this dancing building effect. So I have this drone footage of the Eiffel Tower imported here. Let's drag it down into this icon to create a new composition from the clip. First, let's separate the tower and the background. Press Command or Control plus D to duplicate the footage. And then you can hit Enter to rename them. The top one here will be our tower layer. Since the drone is moving in this footage, we're going to use the new Rotobrush 3 to mask out the tower. If this was a still shot, I'd probably mask it out by hand just using the pen tool, but we like a challenge. Double click on the tower clip to jump to the layer view. You can click here to see the whole composition again, but here is where we'll be doing our mask. Select the Rotobrush tool and start drawing green lines inside of the Eiffel Tower to start masking. You can hold Command or Control and move your mouse up or down to resize the brush. To get rid of any unwanted areas, just hold the Option or the Alt key if you're on Windows, and then you can draw over those parts to remove them. Now, once you get a good first mask, just hit play and let Rotobrush do its thing. Now, you might have to stop and fix your mask in some cases, but Rotobrush 3.0 is pretty good, so this should be relatively easy depending on your footage. So now you can see our mask follows the tower perfectly. Let's go to Effect Controls, and under Rotobrush, we want to select Invert Foreground Background. Then let's click Freeze to lock in our mask. So now let's jump back to our main composition. Now we need to generate a clean plate at the background, which we don't have. So that way when we move our tower, we can see what's behind it. With our tower layer selected, go to Content Aware Fill tab. If you don't see this, you can enable it up here under Windows. Back in Content Aware Fill, expand the alpha a bit. Make sure Fill Method is set to Object. And then let's set Light Correction to Moderate and Range to Work Area which is the bar down here. So now we can click Generate Fill Layer, and then we can get After Effects some time to work its magic. After it's done, we'll get a new layer that fills in the background behind the tower. Now it's time to bring back in our tower. Double click to go to the tower layer again. Let's unfreeze the roto so we can get rid of our foreground background inversion. Then we can freeze again. And now we finally have our tower separate so we can do anything we want with it. For example, we can keyframe its position to have it fall from the sky, or we can bend it by adding the CC bended effects to the tower layer. Then we can set the start position to be at the base of the tower and the end position at the top. And since the camera moves, we need to keyframe both of these points and have it follow the tower. After that's done, it's bending time. Here I set keyframes on bend to make the tower spring back and forth. You can also make it smoother by selecting the keyframes, right click and keyframe assistant and try these easy ease options. And finally, something that people don't know about is adding the CC force motion blur effect. So as it says, force the tower to have motion blur, which will make it look so much better. So while there were a lot of steps here, remember the key is separating the background from the foreground. Once you have that, you can do whatever you want, like making the Eiffel Tower dance to some cool music from today's sponsor, Track Club. I've spent half the amount of time it usually takes me to find the right song since I started using Track Club. Now this might sound impossible, but Track Club's music library focuses on high quality songs over a bloated catalog. And that's not to say that they don't have many songs, cause they do, and they're all fire. After finding the perfect track for my song, I can then customize the heck out of it. Don't like guitars? No problem. The song is too slow? Speed it up. With Track Club's Mix Lab feature, you can pretty much take one song and turn it into five different songs if you wanted to. 
And you don't have to worry about getting those claims on YouTube because they have an automatic clearance system in place. Just link up your YouTube channel to your Track Club account and you're good to go. Now, if you don't believe me, try it out for yourself. Use my link below to sign up and you can get two months free, including monetization, to try out their library for yourself and their cool mixed lab feature. A big thanks to Track Club for sponsoring today's video. And now let's jump back into more satisfying VFX. Next, I wanna create these types of camera rolls. Now, a lot of these shots are done by actually spinning the camera physically, but I wanna to try to take a still shot using Photoshop's generative fill to give it more space to recreate this shot. Now, this uses the same technique we did in the previous visual satisfying effects with the super zoom, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more by using a moving shot this time. So first, we need to start by exporting out the first frame of this video. Let's make sure your play hit is at the start, go up to composition and save frame as Photoshop layer. After Effects will automatically create a Photoshop file for you with an image of the frame ready to go. Here in Photoshop, we want to hit C and expand our canvas to be as big as we want. In Generative Fill, I'm going to leave the prompt blank and hit Generate, and boom. Now let's spice up the scene with some weird looking trees or whatever you want to spice it up with. And I think we're done. You can, of course, go as crazy as you like. Now save this as an image and import it back into After Effects. Here, we're going to create a new composition from our new extended background. Let's throw in the original video on top and it should line up perfectly. If not, just line up the first frame manually. On the video layer, add a mask around the area where our subject will be. Let's select the video layer again. Let's hit F on our keyboard and add some feathering to blend the video into our background better. But now when I hit play, you can clearly see the problem. Our extended background doesn't follow the camera movement of the original video. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to track it. Let's go to our handy tracker tab. Let's hit track camera. Let's select position and rotation. You will see two boxes appear. Let's move both of them to the spot with high contrast so it's easy for After Effects to follow. The inner box is what it will be tracking, and the outer box here is the search area of where our tracking spot might be in the next frame. To start tracking, let's hit the like on this video. Oh wait, that's not, I mean, you can hit like too, of course, but here we're going to hit the track forward button. If the tracker falls off, you can just stop, readjust, and continue tracking. Now once we're done, we need a place to dump all of our tracking data. Right click on the composition here to create a null object which is essentially an empty layer. Back at the tracker tab, let's click edit target, choose our null, and let's hit apply. If you look at the null object now, it now contains all of this tracking data. And on the background layer, let's hold this parent pick whip, cool whip. and drag it to the null object. And now our background follows the handheld camera movement. After all of this groundwork, it may seem like a lot, we can now create the camera roll effect. Let's select all of the layers, right click and pre-compose. Now pre-composing is just like nesting in Premiere. It's putting a composition inside of an existing composition. Kind of like those, what are those Russian dolls? Like you put the dolls inside of each other. Let's change the size of this composition down to 1080p. Now inside of our pre-composed layer here, we can keyframe the scale and rotation and use all of this extra space here we have to do as many zooms and as many spins as you desire. Oh, and don't forget to turn on motion blur, of course, just by clicking this icon to get much nicer results. So for this next edit, I was inspired by Will Carmack's recent reel on creating a fake drone using generative fill. Now it uses similar techniques to the camera roll edit, but what sets Will's scene apart is that he adds moving elements to his extension. So that's what I wanna to try to accomplish here. I have this direct top-down drone video, but the shot is relatively close to the subject. That means we need to expand. Instead of exporting this first frame to Photoshop, we're gonna use the last frame where the drone is at its highest point so we get the frame with the widest view. Now after that, just do what we did the last time to get our set extension. Now we got our extra wide shot in After Effects, but we have the same problem, the same problem with the moving camera. And you guessed it, that means more tracking. To track this shot, I'll need to select position, rotation, 
and also scale. And we need scale because the drone moves away from the ground, making everything smaller. And other than that, just repeat what we did before, and here we go. Now, our shot is pretty boring at the moment, and that's why I got this stock footage of a beach with the same top-down angle. Now we can place it here in our composition, and I'll move and scale it to cover up the empty space on the left. Now the colors are a little bit off, but this is where we can use Lumetri color. And what we can do here is try to match the tint of the sand so it feels like the same place. So now all we need to do is parent the beach layer to our null object. And now our shot feels way more lively, but we're not done yet. Considering that we're on the beach, there should be some wind affecting those trees on the right. So to mimic that, I'm going to use turbulent displace effect. Now we can adjust the amount, the size, and the complexity to your liking. Then keyframe the evolution to make it move. Although we don't want this effect to be applied to the whole thing, that means we need to draw a mask around the tree areas and add some feathering. To make the mask only affect our turbulent, expand the background layer, inside turbulent displays, and you'll see compositing options. Here, click the plus icon and it should automatically have your tree mask selected. And now our effect is only applied to the trees. Other cool effects you can do is using AI to generate completely new effects, or you can use AI, a tool like Runway, to basically add effects to an existing video on top of an existing video. So I'll be using Runway Gen 1 and Runway Gen 2 to show you how it works. So first let's start with Gen 2, which is essentially text to video. So you can create something from scratch just using text. So here inside of Runway, go to Gen 2, and currently we can only create videos no longer than four seconds. So that's a current limitation here. You can start from a text prompt, an image reference, or both. Before we generate, we also have some more options here. You can dial in how intense the motion will be. You can also choose the basic camera movements like rolling, zooming in and out. And because you have to use credits for each generation, Runway gives you an option to show the free previews first before you choose the right style and then generate. So let's see some results. So Gen 2 definitely has some impressive results, but if you wanna apply effects to an existing video, this is where we go back to Gen 1. Now in Gen 1, I can import any video, but right now you have a 15 second limit per generation, which is already much higher than Gen 2 because Gen 1's been around longer. And it also says here that it will be increasing soon. So that's good news. Let's start by dropping in this stock footage I got. Now here I can write in a text prompt or use an image as reference. Then Gen 1 can turn the video into whatever I tell it to. And here you can see the previews before generating. And trust me, you're going to want to use this so you can have a realistic expectation of what to see before you actually generate. So with a tool like Runway, you can take any boring video like this and turn it into an eye-catching piece of content. So I generated a few different styles from the same video and I cut it together with a track from Track Club. So hopefully you're all satisfied now on some ideas on how you can spice up your edits. Thanks to Eye Candy for giving us some inspiration for these edits. And if there are any other effects or things that you see that you're like, oh, I wanna learn how to do that, just leave a suggestion in a comment below. If you wanna check out our other videos on visually satisfying edits, you can click the other video right over here. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the face right over here. As always, stay creative and keep creating better video with Cal. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.